Joining me now is NBC campaign embed Namdi Iguanwu. He spent the last few months following Senator Scott around the country, one of the best jobs in news. And Namdi, this announcement was obviously incredibly sudden. What have you been able to learn about the process behind the scenes to come to this decision? What I can tell you, Garrett, it's, it's a decision that only came together in the last couple of days. There had been discussions in the aftermath of the last debate about the viability of the campaign. And many in Scott's orbit saw the writing on the wall. They knew this was coming down the pike eventually. But no one predicted the format of the announcement would be during an interview on Fox News at 9 p.m. on a Sunday evening. Mm -hmm. um, and many people were, in fact, blindsided. So for today, Scott has spent the bulk of the day attempting to sort of pick up the pieces and talk to a staff that honestly is still sort of shocked and has lingering questions about things like pay and health care. Um, so, you know, the writing was on the wall, but I don't think anyone predicted the announcement would come the way it did. If you were going to design a Republican presidential candidate in a lab, you might end up with somebody like Tim Scott. He had the money. He has the resume, at least on paper. Uh, he had a lot of friends here in Washington, and he's from an early state. I mean, that's kind of like the jackpot if you're putting this together. Yeah. Why do you think he struggled so much to catch on with the voters? Well, you know, when I talk to sources close to the campaign, there's sort of two buckets. There's one bucket of sources that sort of point to leadership and feel this is a matter of an inexperienced team that at times weren't able to capitalize on momentum. Many people have pointed to the time after the Iowa State Fair, right before the first debate, when he was experiencing a slight boom in the polls, and they feel that was an opportunity he should have really hit the ground hard, and he should have, uh, you know, talked to every reporter he could and get his name in headlines, and that just didn't happen. Um, but then you talk to another set of sources who say, that's not really fair criticism. The issue here was an electorate that was unwilling to move on from Donald Trump. And that's something that's pretty consistent with our own polling. Um, they say Scott has high favorabilities. You mm -hmm. know, voters like him. That's it's right. just a matter of they weren't ready to have a candidate not named Donald Trump represent them in the primaries. What do you think his future holds? He says he's not going to endorse. He says he doesn't want to be on somebody else's ticket. That's what they always say. What do you think he's going to end up doing? Well, right now, everyone I've talked to says that's still his position. He's taking his time to make a decision. But I will say there are some sources I've talked to that say he's not closing any doors per se. But right now, the focus is on just talking to the team, um, you know, getting out of the race before doors close on him and, you know, taking his time to make a decision about what his future will look like exactly. He's obviously from South Carolina. What do we know about his sway there in particular? Like, if he's going to make an endorsement, is it, does he give Haley a bigger boost if he does it there? Like, how do they think about those issues? Well, here's what's interesting. You know, we had our poll in another early state, Iowa, mm -hmm. and, you know, with him dropping out, we were able to, NBC analysis, reallocate where his support will go. And what we saw was that Trump, DeSantis, Haley, they each saw about a two-point bump. And that's sort of indicative of what people I talked to said. You know, even people that really liked Tim Scott, they always pointed to a Nikki Haley as an alternative. They always talked about a DeSantis as a potential alternative. And personally, I feel lesser so, um, but even some pointed to Trump. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that Scott really sort of highlighted in his campaign is that he was different from Trump. He was the optimist. He was hopeful. He was the happy warrior. But even with that, uh, there were people who supported him that said, we liked Tim Scott. We think he's a great guy. We think he'd be an amazing running mate. But we don't know if we're ready to move on from Donald Trump. So in South Carolina, we have to see what exactly will happen. But uh, I think it's, you know, his supporters will go to anyone who ends up being uh, able to take the reins away from Donald Trump. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Nami, thank you for your reporting. We will see you back on the trail soon, I am sure. Now Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.